Hi everyone, it's Daisy. We're going to be working on shading the human eye. And for us to do so, we are going to introduce you to a few tools that we'll be using. First off, these little guys are called stumps. Some of you may know of them, but for those of you who don't, you can get them in the art store. It's basically paper that's been rolled really tight so that it makes for a better blending tool because our fingers may not be always the right size for a certain area that we want to work on. Um, now comes our pencils. I like to draw with something that's really light. So I have a 2H. Now these pencils are preferred by artists to do their prelim sketches. Even architects like them a lot because the line, the carbon coming off of it is very meager. You could replace this with a mechanical pencil that you normally carry. Uh, so if you don't have one, not a problem. 2B also in the same ballpark. It's got a little bit more black on it, but not too much. And then I have a charcoal pencil. The one that I have with me is called a Primo Elite. And this one gives me solid black. So for certain parts of the eye where I want to really have a very condensed uh, black and very, very strong uh, in rendering, I want to use charcoal versus another graphite pencil. So um, last but not least, I have got my 6B pencil, which is um, the kind of pencil that I prefer for most things. I may not even pick up my charcoal a lot of times, but the 6B gets me through a lot. So I'm going to put uh, these down. Now my eraser. Normal erasers are just fine. Let me introduce you. This one is in a tube, which you can bring out as much as you want. And you can also shave the tip of it to where you can get into tiny, tiny corners. Another one is called a kneaded eraser. This is what a kneaded eraser looks like. You can literally knead this guy into making, getting rid of the carbon that it puts on. Another cool thing about this guy is you can literally knead it to a tiny little point like that and get into small crevices. So that's one of the reasons we really like it and we use it all the time in our graphite classes, not as much in our other art classes. So these are our main tools and last but not least is a tissue. If I need it for larger areas, I have a regular kind of a tissue that I would fold and then fold again, just so as I can make it really thick on one end, put my finger and hold it tight and just blend. But these are different tools that I'll be working with. Now let's get started on it. Here's our paper. So as it's centered, there we go, right here. And we'll first off take our 2H or 2B, whatever your preference, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to draw an eye. So right over here. When you draw the eye for a person, if you are a freehand drawer, you want to take the time to observe as to the different shapes. So I noticed on the eye that I'm using as a reference to the side, I have quite the lift here curves off and then a little point to the end. You always get a tear duct about this point. The lower part of my eye has the widest uh, kind of a uh, dip, not in the middle, but to the side. So I'm going to bring it here. So notice that this is the deepest at this point, not to the center again. And from here, I will bring it on. So I break my line down into many, many components. I'm going to change over to a 2B because I feel like this may not be visible enough to all of you all that are watching this video. And so I'm going to go over all my lines right there. I have a second eyelid and I'll draw it to where I see it. The eyebrow, I Place it based on proximity. The highest point on my arch would be about here. So I'm going to go ahead and have my line. This is just the inside of my eyebrow. The outer side, 
for the reference picture that I'm using are full eyebrows, not a pencil eyebrow. So that means pencil would simply mean a very skinny eyebrow. And so there was a time, I believe it was in the 1980s, where pencil eyebrows were quite the thing. Now, our eye itself, when I draw the iris, I don't try to draw the curve that I see. I pay attention to the white that is left after the iris is drawn. So there we go. This is where I see the uh, left side. My right side is from here. So I plug those two in and I also see that it comes, it rounds off before it touches the lower lid. Right there. It does not touch our lower lid. So I'm gonna make that gap. Actually, I would like to Bear with me, please. I want it to go a little bit more closer to my bottom lid line. So here we are. And that becomes our eye that we're going to be working with. We have got the pupil. Pupil is the black dot to the center of everybody's eye. It controls the amount of light that goes in and out. Very important. Um, a lot of times I hear teachers referencing it in a, quite a different way. So what I want to do is I want to draw in my light spots before I make my pupil. Um, there are two light spots in my reference picture. So there's one. I'm just going to draw it so as you can see it. And the second one. right here. These are going to stay white. I'm not going to color inside of them or do any shading. Now right in the center, this is where I would want to build in my pupil. So you ideally want to be centered in your eye to where you actually have the pupil right in the middle. So it's just a matter of just looking at it and making sure that you are there. Next, what we're going to do is we're not going to start with our charcoal. We go now to our 6B pencil. The 6B has a lot more carbon to offer, and so I like to use it in terms of applying my base values. What does that mean? So I take my pencil, and I will literally just draw over the line that I have firmed up as being my final line. I will do this, and I notice that on the inside of my lower lid, I can see a little bit of my reference picture's inner lid. So I'm gonna draw that in as well. But the black of my 6B pencil, I want on the outer line, not the inner line. Another crucial thing to mention when it's about technique is the tips of your pencils have to be very, very sharp. If they're not, and if you just keep working at a stretch and they tend to dull out or blunt up, but you're still working, you won't get the finesse that you are looking for. Now I'm gonna go for my skinnier stump right there. I'm going to just stroke over my line and I'm going to start stroking inward over my eye. Can you see that little gray right there? I'm gonna stroke over my bottom line. Even though I didn't draw the 6B over all of it, I'm still going to Take care of it. Now, the white of our eyes, people like to leave it white, but traditionally, it isn't that white, if you think about it. I have so much carbon, just with those prelims lines that I made, that I can still work with this. And I don't have to change back and forth. Do you see how much shading I've already got done? I'm gonna go back in with my 6B now, everyone and I am going to create some darkness inside the pupil. In essence, what is happening right now when you do that, when you allow the, your 6B, which is one of our softest pencils, to put in this much of carbon anywhere, it's like a little inking pot. I can now use my little stump and smooth the whole thing out and I can add more value 
to my top lid. Remember, the top of the eye will always show more darkness because it's get, there's a shadow being cast by your eyelid over the eye itself all the time. You can't get rid of it. Now I'm going to extend the shadow into my eyelid area. And I'm also going to use this part and extend some value into my keeping the rest of the area clean. So notice the very pale gray over there. Again, I'm going to now put my 6B on the outside of my iris, just like this. And I'm again going to create one more line of 6B over my top lid, not the bottom, everyone. So I'm going to stroke, stroke, just like that. Now I'm going to use that and bring it in to create value inside the colored rendering of my eye, just like this. I'm going to stroke on the top lid and I'm going to increase the darkness to my eye right there. Again, the white of the eye is not a pure white. It feels that way, but if you look at it a little bit more closer, you won't feel that way at all. Now, for those of you who feel like you never really see a perfect line around your eyebrow, you would be right. You can take your eraser and you can gently get rid of that dominant line because you really do want to stroke up uh, the hair texture um, and the feel of uh, creating small hairs. I don't like putting my finger to my graphite because it is just going to be, your hands are like a blending tool. You're going to start moving the carbon from one to the other and it will happen very naturally. So here we go. Now, and now the next technique, I'm going to do it on this paper because this is all an exercise for us at this point. So um, give me one minute. So I would like to create what we call a swatch. You know a swatch is when you go to the paint store to get paint, um, there are swatches of colors that you would pick up. Similarly, when you're working with uh, graphite, you create a swatch. And it's like an inking pot for your eye. So, so as I can show everything on the same paper, I'm gonna create it on the side. Take your 6B, that's the one that we want to use for our swatch and you create yourself a little pool of strong carbon, just like this. Now, let me explain why I'm doing that. And I'm going to do a little exercise on this side, so as you have points of comparison. So far, what we did was we created, if we had a curve for an eye, we used our stump from the 6B and we used our shadow and we brought it down and all the rest of it did this, right? And we've been creating value right under it, if you can see this. The reason we want to keep up with this uh, stump technique is because we can actually use a finite eraser to cause very fine hair-like lines through our uh, value. And we can do it because it's very smooth. But if I had used a pencil just like this to create my hairs first, and then gone over it and created, blended everything out, you can definitely do that. That is a way of uh, addressing the various hairs that we see. But now if I want to erase on top of something, you'll notice that I'm not able to take off. Hold on. I want to use a brush versus my pencil, my fingers right there. So if I try to erase into the lines, 
if you can see this, and I'm going to put this up a little bit closer so as you can see this. So you will notice that the lines still stay right over there. Can you see that? You're not able to get the lines to go away completely, but the shaded area where you spread the carbon around, you are able to get rid of with your erasers. That's one of the reasons why when you're when you want to pick up on skills on shading, you would use this technique of uh, applying your carbon with a stump and a swatch, just like this. Now I'll get a larger area and I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I have a lot on here. I'm going to go back to my eyebrow and we're going to go from our eyebrow and we'll come down. So notice how dark it's getting. Now, our next step would be, I'm going to take my eraser, which is this guy right here, and it's got an edge on its um, tip, if you can see that. I'm going to use that to create some hairs into our eyebrow. So just like this. Be sure to not put your fingers on your uh, graphite piece because your hands have got natural oils that will move or act as a blending tool for you. Now what you'll notice is that you got some light, very, um, very, very light cleaned up areas and some dark shadowed areas. At this point, you can take your 6B and you can start inserting in some brow hair, just like this. Remember, now look at my pencil tip. It's not as sharp as it was. And if I keep going, which I can, I won't get the same value that I would like to. So I'm, I've gone and I've sharpened, and I'm going to add in So for a very natural looking kind of a eyebrow, you need a mixture of strong strokes, medium and very light, because that would look natural on the eye. So our, tech, our endeavor here with every tutorial that we put out for you all is to get you closer to your want of being more and more realistic And here. Now I'm done with my eyebrow and I'm going to go ahead take my stump again go to the swatch get some more value. This is the inside nook of the eye that I'm shading in. Would like you to take a moment to um, remember to check out anybody else's eye in a photograph and just pay attention to where do you see the dark to the light. I'm doing a lot of my work with my stump and my swatch because I don't need to put a pencil to it. If I put a pencil, I'll have to keep that line. And I do it when, I, when I'm really confident and I'm ready to do so. So that is what we've got in terms of our shading around the eye. Now let's go back. I'm going to add 6B to your eyelid right about here. Got a little bit of an extra stroke right there, but I'll fix it in. And I'm going to add in I will enhance the dark as I see it in my reference picture. So I gave her a little bit of a thicker um, value to the edge.
and I rub between the two lines to make the area of the eyelid a little bit more deeper than the actual eye itself. I'm going to add some more value down here into the eye. I want to increase the darkness here. A little bit more. Now, if I want it darker still, my other option is to actually put more pencil to it. Next, you're going to add your little lines that you would see if you look at your eye in the mirror. You get these random strands. These are the muscles of our iris that help in contracting and expanding as the pupil needs it to do. So all these lines that we notice in our eyes, our friend's eyes, are nothing more than more muscles. Muscles that are working to do what they're supposed to doing. Remember, don't blend all over as one consistent shade. You don't want to do that. Try to variate your shading because if you pay attention to what you are trying to draw, you'll notice that there is a lot of different values. It's not all the same. Next, I'm going to shoot for my eyebrows. So if this is our line, I'm going to do a little exercise right here before I go to my main eye. If this is my eyes curve, I don't want you to start putting eyebrows like that. Try to get into a motion of following the curve and stroking up, following the curve, stroking up. So follow the curve, stroke up, follow the curve, stroke up. Don't just stroke up from an area because that will look harsh. It won't fit in. And you're, you're going to get a very unnatural kind of a look. So now we're going back to the eye. Stroke away. Remember to check your pencil for its um, tip. And coming into this eye. And there you have your eye, smaller. For the lower one, it'll be different. Touch your bottom crease and help the dots to kind of make like a dot and pull out, pull out. And don't draw the eyebrows on the lower lid if you can't see them in your actual reference picture. So after a certain value, I actually cannot. So I will stop right there. Here you go. I want to show, if you can see this, do you see how I show some skin right there? I want that to keep over where it's at. That means I would like to show a little bit of the lower lid that we see in the eyes sometimes, not all the time, but if I see it, I like to address it. Now, I want to really bring the pop into it. This is where my charcoal is going to come in. So I'm going to go to my charcoal pencil. Remember, my tip is nice and fine. I need to make sure of that. And I can add in a few hairs right here. Just like that. And just bear with me. I'm going to add this charcoal on this the eyes lid right here. I am going to add the charcoal to my pupil area right here. At this time, as I get closer to going in for a nice blend, I need to remind you all that we want to have more than maybe one stump working for us. Why? Because we don't want to mix our types. So, so far I was using this one for my graphite and I'm going to write on here that is for graphite. I'll take a new one for charcoal. So I'll go back to the eyebrow, start from the top. 
Run your stump over the strokes that you actually made with your charcoal and help them get softened up. If you don't do that, it's going to look like you have a stroke there and it's just sort of randomly there. I can pick up a little bit from here if I need to add a little bit more. And if I want to enhance like from this area, I feel like I'd like to see a little bit more darkness. I can always go back in and add more to my eye. Now go back over the eyebrow, eyelid right here and over here. This time you have to be on top of your previous strokes. Try not to go for more new ones. So you really want to bring in and I want to shade into the eye as well. I want to use some of that dark charcoal into the eye and make it a little bit more darker. So if you rewind and go to the first step of this eye and what you saw versus now, you will understand that it is, we have just intensified the whole thing a lot more. And I want to use a little bit of this black onto my lashes to give her a little bit more of a pop. So I try to go back in and be deliberate to be on top of some of the lashes that I created. Now I can use, go back with my stump. Always stroke one way, not backwards, because it'll give you a finite edge on the, when you stroke out. like this. And this is all for our class for today uh, because I would like to try to control our um, skills videos to 30 minutes, not go over it. But we'll come back with some more techniques and build up more on eyes and other parts of uh, the body, plus tutorials on how to draw and shade fruits and other popular subjects. If you have a suggestion or a request, please uh, send it to us, write it down below, and we'll be sure to put out a tutorial to help work with what you're wanting to work on. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Give me your feedback. It's always good to get that so I can better what I'm doing right now so we can improve on our tutorials for you and work together hand in hand. Have a great day. See you soon.